Yes, yes, yes. Shalom, Chabarim. Shalom. <coughs> <coughs> yes, yes, yes. Greetings, greetings, greetings. Shalom, Chabarim. Baruch Yehovah. Eloheinu HaKadosh Baruch Hu Baruch Hashem. So this particular vlog right here, I am Yadin. This is Yadin. Um, PKA also known as and publicly known as Ras Ayadonis Tafari. Ras Ayadonis Tafari. Yadin, Yadin, Yadin. LOJ Society right here. Royal Order of the Ethiopian Hebrews after the Order of Malachi Tzedek. So this one right here, we're going to call this one Obia in the Bible. Is Obia. Obia, right? Is Obia in the Bible? Yes, Obia is in the Bible. First of all, I'd like to heal up Abdiel Levi, Abdiel Lewi, aka Zion Lex. Got to hear, and also thank you, Shashali, as well. Got to hear him on the platform, I think House of Conscious platform. And it's interesting the maturity and the growth, you know, amongst many of our fellow. Um, you can say scholars and researchers, even in the black consciousness community, you know, just generally speaking and Sarnet in the House of Consciousness as well. But just on this point right here, I'd like to do more of this, keep some regular posts on the Rastafari Jews and also the live stream on the Rastafari Israelites. I have a lot that we are seeking to work and plan together with other brethren within our Rastafari, we could say consciousness community as well to bring forward on live streams and presentations as well by many of our own researchers and um, scholars you know within the consciousness of generally speaking let's call it black history right black history but also the black mystery this is more of the black mystery right the mystery some might say my story right mystery so is obia in the Bible, yes, it is, and I got to hear gladly and thankfully. You know, one really helped to connect the dots with others that there's a whole wealth of research, linguistically speaking, you know, within the Hebrew scriptures. You know, both the old, right, what's called the old, as well as the New Testament, and even the Koine Greek. We have to get out of this linguistic um, confusion, you know, remember. In, how to make a slave the Willie Lynch letters is spoke about um controlled language controlled language so a lot of things that we're able to read is in the translated so-called European latter-day Gentile languages English being the chief of them and then we also have like a lot written in French and also Spanish and in different you know vernaculars and dialects and you know and also period you know we talk about the King James version of the Bible now we don't dismiss it you see what I'm saying? But we don't over credit it, right? In some things we must discredit, you know, the KJV version in favor of the more, I can even say the more Afro-Shemitic root, getting to our roots. So when we talk about the Hebrew languages, it's Afro-Shemitic, Afro-Semitic, Afro-Semitic language. Now, not to get into that right here, but let's heal up Avdi Alevi, Avdi Alewi. AKA Zion Lex, when he brought forward in the discussion concerning the Bible and and the Israelites, the Hebrews, or as one may say, the Jews, or we would say, we the black Jews. We are the black Jews of the lion of the tribe of Judah. So we're both connecting to our, how can you say, our 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 natural right history. Right, but also what one may refer to as supernatural mysteries. And we don't want to spook it out. People say, oh, this is spookism. Well, if you don't know it, it's like science. Science, science, the word science, even that word science is interesting because science means knowledge. Right? Science basically means knowledge to know. What does it mean to know? So let's know this right here that our brother Zion Lex. You know, our black Hebrew, black Yehudi, you know, black Jew brother, Ethiopian Hebrew royal order brother, he brought it out very clear when he said that the word Obia, because ones will say, well, we as Hebrews and as, as Israelites and as, as black Jews or Yehudi, we who make this claim, right, are just making like, it's like identity theft. One are taking the other, other J words argument like garfield i have to say garfield's improved a lot you know 
um, and it's interesting, you know, some of his uh, presentation and perspective. But most recently, what I heard, there's a few points that we'll like to even address concerning the Bible. It's like ones are more so-called afraid of the Bible or, or blame so-called the Bible. They blame the Bible and not the so-called white man or the so-called European, even historically, right, who was a liar and a hypocrite. Right and a, a counterfeit Christian by and large, not all, not all, not all, but by and large, when we're looking at it from the perspective of so-called pseudo white supremacy, you know. But those particular matters concerning what Garfield read, what he has presented, a whole other reasonment there. But this is just to kind of highlight, you know, something that a fellow Hebrew or Israelite, a fellow Black Jew, brother. Zion Lex had mentioned concerning Obia in the Bible and trying to show that even in the West African traditions, right, we can see that identity of what we refer to as we, the black Jews, Hebrews, Israelites, and this whole connection to what is referred to as a so-called Judeo, some might say Judeo-Christian, but Judeo root. Now, that's a point in and of itself, right? That point right there kind of takes me into some responses or even engagement with what Garfield read, what he has presented and what he has has said, you know, concerning that particular matter, how he's somewhat dismissive, you know, of those of us. He tries to say that we, as we, the once lost, now found black and brown sheep, of the people of the Beta Israel, the house of Israel, are the identity thieves, you know, and there seemed to be some confusion, right, within his um, blame the Bible approach that he's missing some academic, some linguistic and historical points of reference. Like when he speaks about the Hellenism, you know, the Hellenistic period and there was no Torah. He doesn't understand what Torah really means. Brother Zion Lex might be able to enlighten him and also the fact that there was Torah, Right before Moshe's, Moses's Torah, right? Moses' law, what's referred to as Moses's Torah. We have it within the textual reference, and also there's older scriptures. Let's point this out. Some say that the Torah did not come into vogue based on modern academic, some academic consensus would present to the students, the colleges, and to the academic community their hypothesis, their hypothesis that, well, basically the oldest Torahs or copies of the Hebrew scriptures is to the Babylonian or the post-Babylonian period and this whole thing about Judaism. We need to distinguish well, what is referred to as Yehuda, Yehuda Judaism, right? And, and to be a Jew of the tribe of Judah, we have to first get to the root idea, especially where we, the black Jews and we black people, might have a credible and evidence history, right? I mean, many others have brought this out even more so. And, and the confusion is that ones are bringing many of the arguments among so-called European or white Jews. They have been arguing and reasoning amongst them, some who believe and some who don't believe, so forth and so on and also with the white Christian community. And this is the backing of the academic consensus, right? And we know that anything concerning the glory, greatness, or real history of we, the black people, we have to fight for because there was an organized campaign and was not just in Christianity and religion, but it also extends to the academic community. This also extends to the academic consensus that many of our brothers like to default to, right? But all of that being aside is Obia in the Bible. Now, I, I like this particular still right here. This is from something that we did a quick research. So, you know, just hail up to the ones who put this together. When we saw this, we said, this is very good for more than one reason, right? Even me and I and I and I, a few of I and I was reasoning about Moses being, was Moses a magician? Right? What was a magician? It appears in the Torah narrative was a magician. And this kind of links with what ones might refer to as as Obia or as, as some might say voodoo or voodoo and some might say hoodoo, right? Even in 
the tradition of my people, the Geechee and Gullah people, we know that there's a connection there with what is generally from a a Anglo-American, an Anglo-European perspective referred to as witchcraft. Now, if we point to the certain things in the translation, the main thing we're looking at is, is the word obia in the Bible. As Brother Zion Lex, he pointed to, I think he pointed to the narrative that's in Samuel, the Samuel narrative. Now, we had collected a few, a few word arts, a few samples. So let's just go through a few of these samples right here. Right. Some of you remember this particular movie. Yeah. This one here. Very interesting movie. You know, we can go back to certain customs both over there, right, in West Africa and over here. Right. And then there's the argument that, well, and this is Black History Month. Right. So this is good for Black History Month. They'll say that, well, we're not Hebrews or Israelites because they did not come off the boats, you know, saying they were Hebrews and Israelites and wasn't doing things that were Jewish Judaism. So there's a confusion of terms and terminologies that all refer and relate to the same people. We have this also within the Kemetic and the Egypt and Egyptology, you know, those who advocate for Kemetic science or Egypt vis-a-vis -vis the Bible or just Egypt in and of itself, there's a confusion with what is it, what was the name of ancient Egypt or well, what names did they use? Most would tell you it was Kemet, but Kemet comes from the 11th dynasty period, the 11th dynasty period and afterward, right? That was the Tawi, the Tawi was the more original name. Right, the Tawi, and then we get even Tameri around the same period that we get the Kemet being referred to. And the Kemet is not even all of the land. So putting these things into context, that was the agricultural ground, so forth and so on. But the Tawi was the two lands, and we did a vid pointing out Mitzrayim from the Hebrew perspective. How when we now look at this Hebrew script and look at the Hebrew tradition and the Israelite tradition based on the evidence, we as the once lost now found black people, right, who truly are seeking to research and look at it from the true spirit of it. The European, what he did, he lied on the Bible, he lied on God, he lied on, on, on everything to create this abomination called white supremacy, so forth and so on. So much of the rhetoric that ones get concerning Obia and voodoo and, and, and the cult scientists, this also comes from or through, you know, the European, the, the, the spectacles of the European. Right. Imagine the European explaining certain things as we have historical examples of him explaining things in other people's culture. Right. He explains it from his particular um, calcium or what, what do they call it? The calcium calcified pineal gland perspective, you know, so he misses a lot. And it seems as though he has a, um, a, a kind of a default Right in his perspective, the European moat. Not all, not all, not all. We're not saying, going to say all because there are many Europeans or many white people who actually, you know, have gone into things to even expose certain things. So what we're going to talk about is the Torah here. Right now, there's the Torah before the Torah. Let me state that the Torah basically is the directions, instructions as concerning. You know, traditionally it's viewed as what was from Exodus in the time of Moses and the books after that, you know, Moses' law, Moses, what Moses got when he went up to Sinai, when he went up to Sinai. I want to also heal up Muta Baruka right here. I think we have something with Muta. You can see some of the exhibits we have right here. Right, where he has voodoo, right, voodoo in the different ways it's spelled, whether it's from, like, notice, one way it's spelled is, is the Europeans, the white people that speak English. The other way it's spelled is more from the, the Francophiles, the French. You know what I'm saying? So there's different ways that it's even, and they say voodoo. Some say there's more, not to get into those, but hopefully to bring ones and ones forward that can articulate better on the nuances. We're just giving an overview right here. And so when Muta said o Obia misunderstood, and even in some of his his um, uh, reasoning, right, Muta has said that, you know, what, what you see going on in the Bible could be considered or is Obia too, or is Voodoo too, right? If we're saying that this is some spiritual tradition that links us here in the natural, right? 
with the so-called supernatural, right? Or us here on earth with the heavens, the more refined area of reality. Now, we can't deny spirituality truly, right, without a whole heap of cognitive dissonance. Because spirituality, our breath, our thoughts, right, our breath and our thoughts basically link us to the spiritual, to the spirit. But then we can manifest many times, right, our thoughts or our breath, our feelings, our emotions can be manifest, right? So be, beyond the, the physical, the ancestors just collectively and overall speaking were very um, scientific. This is why to say science is also to refer to what is called voodoo, voodoo, uh, voodoo, obia, so-called witchcraft. Now the Europeans, because he was unfamiliar with what these terms mean, and this is one reason why you'll hear many of us who are in the research and can prove and show and prove say that, well, Obia was in the Bible, right? In almost a similar context as most people would refer to Obia today, right? And people say, well, this is what our people were doing, and therefore they can't be Hebrews or Israelites, or they can't be from this uh, so-called Yehudi or Judeo, you know, tradition. They are wrong with that. They are wrong, but we understand why they are wrong because they are going on the available um, information and, and whatever intel or knowledge can be gathered from the available information. But there's a whole half of the story, as Rastaman, you know, would say there's a half of the story that hasn't been told. And part of the half of that story now connects with the root, the root of that very book, right? The root of that very book. Now, People say, well, the, the, the scripture goes back to the Babylonian period and, and the West Africans, they more have a rabbinical Talmudic um, Judaism. And it's not the Judaism of, of, of so-called of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So, well, of course it's not. See, that's clarified by a better understanding of the narrative itself. But what's happened to a lot of our people, right? Do we have the, do we have the slave Bible? Let's see. Yeah, we, we have a, a little bit of the slave Bible here. Where should we start with the slave Bible? Let's start with this right here, the slave Bible. How many of you are familiar with something called the slave Bible? There was a slave Bible. You hear people say that the Bible was given to us. The Bible was never our book, right? Well, no, the Bible in the King James and Western translations, no, that, that version was basically new to us. But as many of our people went into it and were able to read, we was able to, to decipher it. Right? and apply it appropriately like the Nat Turners. Notice that, right? That was in the early days when the Bible was forbidden under the pain of punishment and even death, right? And mutilation and brutality. The Bible was forbidden to the so-called Negro slaves, the so-called blacks to read, right? And then, see, we have to put it into its chronological order to really understand how we get here. You know what I'm saying? At first, right, it was totally forbidden to the slave because they began to notice when any of the black people really started to read the Bible for themselves. When we first came over, when we still were so-called hot, when we first came over here, it was like fire. It was like a whole reorientation of things and it empowered us. Note that, check. And then they had to bring the terror. They had the European, the white man had to bring the terror. So he killed men, women, children, and mutilated ones, cut out their tongues, gorge out their eyes because of reading and especially reading the Bible or possessing the Bible. The Bible was like a kind of, once a black man had it, it became a krypton, a, um, kryptonite, right? To so-called white supremacy of those, you could say, the direct enslavement days. So what they did is they created something known as the Slave Bible. What was the Slave Bible? It was selected parts of the Holy Bible, why, right, for the use of the Negro slaves. Now, here's what's interesting. When we look at black so-called church, the black church, right? We look at the black church. We can see the good and the beautiful, the useful, and we can see the bad and the ugly. 
right? Like a lot of people today say they're not into the church and the black church, so forth and so on, right? Because of what they find to be the bad, the ugly, the contradictions, and the lack of anything that really seems to be able to better the community. But we cannot deny, right, that there was a different time. So there was a black church, like nowadays, seems to have degenerated, right, for the use, generally speaking, of black people and black, you know, the moving forward of us, right? Because even the whole Africa idea, right, also is heavily connected, right, with black people's interpretation and view. Now, I know a lot of people like to knock and, and, and talk about interpretation, but check it out. When ones come to us from a Hebrew and an Israelite perspective, and when we truly are grounded correctly, right, we know to go to the Hebrew. We know that that is important. All of our ancestors, it goes back to the whole Negro reading, right? A Negro reading, where a Negro reading was forbidden, right? Now they're trying to forbid you from really reading and understanding the Hebrew, right? For yourself and for ourselves, you know? They're trying to prevent you from that because a lot of ones have been able to kind of um kind of blackface the bible the king james version right to blackface it now we're not dismissing it i know people are saying listen isn't this about the obia thing yes it is about that but this is the whole connection right to the general conversation that's going on and no doubt one's going to run into more or less of this as time goes on but this is like another stage Right? Even when the Israelites came out of the, the, the Tawi, the Mitzrayim, you see, when they came out of there, they had to go by stages, even through this wilderness. It's a sort of wilderness, right? We're, we're out of our comfy, not comfy, but you know, by comparison, a more comfortable zone, right? We could look back on the 60s, but definitely 2023 is not the 60s. There are similarities because the struggle, the battle, the war goes on, right? And we have to continue to fight, but we also have to, you know, after battle review, right? After battle review. So after those battles of our previous ancestors against white supremacy, what tools did they use, right? And they use things like the Bible, but it wasn't because they were believe believers, right? Like the white people and the other Christians were. I mean, this is kind of plainly obvious, right? But something happened. And what happened is that once they was able to sow the slave Bible, right? This is something called the slave Bible. The, and it's interesting looking at the slave Bible. Notice it says right here it was for use in the British West Indies islands. Right? But it was for the use all over, the same techniques, they shared techniques. So even though they were different nations, there was the British, there was the French, you know, there was the Portuguese, Portuguese, the Spanish, you know, but they all shared tactics. Though they fought amongst themselves, they also had to make sure that they kept down the enslaved, the enslaved. You see what I'm saying? So we came over here, yes. With other, this is some guy right here, we came over here, now this is getting to a whole other matter that we'd like to address. You know, a lot of people say, well, the Bible supports slavery. As we just say so simply, if the Bible really supports slavery, why is the word slavery found very few, like uh, only a few, a couple times, actually a couple of times in the whole Bible? See, the whole context of it wasn't about slave, even in the translation. So you have to recognize what the white man will do. You know, he'll flip the script. He's good at flipping the script, flipping the script on each other, right? And definitely if he can flip the script on each other, right? They collectively together have flipped the script on us, right? So they're making you believe, oh, oh, the Bible is all because of the Bible if the white man did what he did. It's almost like blaming the Bible instead of blaming the man. Right. Blaming the men and people that did it. Right. Because we find out that in the Bibles he read, the term slavery is not even there. So where you, that's why they call slavery a peculiar institution. Why? Because the so-called white supremacist made that up. He made that up. It was the worst abomination ever. Right. But check this. Even the prophecy of the Hebrew scriptures, it prophesizes of that right, to people who could be identified as Hebrews, Hebrew Israelites, as Israelites, as Yehudi, as Jews, as even we, the black Jews, Ethiopian Hebrews, so these sort of people, 
right? So when people say, well, you're not the Jews because they look at the white J words, you know, and they say, um, look at them, look what they do, look what they have, look, look, look they're rich, they have all this wealth, or they, they're in a good, you know how our people like to say, we need to be like the Jews and look how the Jews do, blah, 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 blah. Right? And therefore, they go to selected parts of the scripture and apply it my, to the 740 to today, J words, right? I say 740 AD, because this is when we find that these Eastern Europeans adopted my, the scripture and what's known as Judaism, you know, post um, Babylonian, you know, rabbinical Talmudic Judaism. People say, well, fire, oh, boo, 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 but understand how that's also connected. My, to our own story because black people have been everywhere in what is called today Africa and outside of Africa. That's the first point right there. It's almost like we black people think like the European, like the white man wants us to think, like he make himself believe that black people are Africans and Africans are only found in the continent of Africa, right? See, because that rhetoric, right? That's, that's a part of his grim war. You know what grim war is? Grim war. Some people call it Solomonic magic or, or, or demonology or whatnot like that. These things are real. So we're not dismissing the reality of so-called obia. Right? We're saying that obia is real. The spirit, these spiritualities are real. Santeria, Uhudu, Voodoo, Voodoo. These things are real. But notice how real they are. They're so real that they're even found in HaTorah. They're found in the Torah. Let's go here. And this was what we mainly sought to get to, but need to connect some of the dots, right? Hopefully for the general public or ones and ones who might watch this generally, right? And just keep with due time. This is not intended to be a long vlog here. Hopefully when we get into a more better presentation discussion, boom. So here we have familiar spirits. Let's just spell the word um, fully right here. Get that right there. Get that out. Let's search this again. So we have right here familiar spirits, right? Familiar spirits. So we're going to go to just a couple of scriptures right here. What Abdiel Levy did, he went to this area of scripture right here. I think he went to Samuel, Samuel, right? And Samuel, now Shemuel was dead and called Yisrael had lamented him and buried him in Ramah, even in his own city. And Shaul had put away those who had, check it, familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. Right? Now, this is partly historical. Right? right here, what we have in some of these books. Not, remember, the Bible is a collection of books. Right? A, a collection of books. Now, when they collected a lot of the books, they left out also a lot of books, too. So it was like a collection of books. So we start out here from the King James. We, we make this a stepping stone and we watch our step. Right? We don't want this to be a stumbling block. The King James Version for a lot of our Hebrews and Israelites has become like a stumbling block. Right? Because there's too much deep endings on it. Right? As though it's almost the inerrant word of God. And this is this is going away right, from the truth of the matter. But here it's about familiar spirits. It's the H one seven eight. So here it says Oba. Here we have Ob, right? Phonetically Oba. Oba. Right, ob. In modern Hebrew, they'll say ova, ova, v, v, with a v, the b as a v. Now that's because of the introduction of the Eastern European mother tongue. But our true mother tongue is Afro-Shemitic. That's why we often refer to the Afro-Shemitic. It says, my son, hear the instruction of thy father, forsake not the Torah, the Torah of thy mother. This is from the Hebrew scripture the Torah of thy mother. So the, even the sexism, right, that's falsely attributed through white pseudo-supremacy, right, is knocked out the box once we start to reorientate ourselves with the truth for ourselves, right? And we even encourage even our comedic brothers to get out of their, the, 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 the translators and really start to master the linguistic science. Also, hail up to Abdiel Levy, you know, Abdiel Levy on that matter right, right there. So, here, some of the definitions, BDB right here, right? Now, we don't overcredit these definitions, but we give a certain amount of credit, credence, like trust to them. 
right? But we like to keep things in perspective and like to do our own independent research. But this as a basic kind of first step or as we say, stepping stone is good right here. Now they kind of put a lot of terms, they really confuse in, in the King James Version, right? When it talks about, you know, um, the so-called other spirituality. Let's call it other spirituality. Remember, we began off saying that Obia is real. Mm -hmm. Obia is real. Now, we're not saying that we, we, um, we, we don't discredit its reality. Right? Theologically, for ourselves, right, we don't credit it. You know what I'm saying? But we know ones that do credit, right? And it has, how can we say, it has a work. It has a sphere of influence. This also proves its realness. Cause a lot of people like to say, like even Garfield Reed, he was like saying, you know, well, like Moses, not real, Abraham and Jacob, they're not real, so forth and so on. And a lot of y'all also have to ascribe to that and then like to say, well, it's like Bunny, uh, Bugs Bunny. Mm hmm. That's funny. You know, Bugs Bunny. Or it's like Spider Man. We've heard ones like Jabari say that, you know, that, that, well, we would not even like to dis. Um, be disingenuous to our other, you could say, black or African, you could say, ancestors or people who are part of the, the overall of our ancient people from a so-called black or an African perspective. So we, we would not like to say the same thing about, you know, Horus or Ra or, because we would say, well, Heru was not real. Horus was not real. Wait, hold on for a moment. All the kings... Many of the kings of ancient the Nisu Bati Bati of ancient um, Tawi that many like to call Kemet, they had a Horus name and they were the Horus in their generation. So how can we say they're not real? Right? These are principles, so forth and so on. Yes, but Bugs Bunny is not a principle. Spider Man is not a principle. You always are different, brothers and sisters, because they, they're going to hit us up with those things. Right. So this is this is the first retort right there. Right. It is not. It's, it basically shows they don't have any better argument. But here and speaking of Ob, Ob in the Bible, Ob. Let's go to the verse right here for a moment. The Hebrew verse. Cause we're talking about linguistic, um, you know, linguistic uh, science, but also linguistic literacy. Right. Linguistic literacy. So here we have this right here. It says, Ua Shemuel mate. Vayisa pedua lau call Israel. Vayikha be ruhu ba rama or varama uva ero ve shawula hesira ha vote ha vote or ha a boat. So it's pointed here as modern Hebrew readers will say ha a vote, and it's this particular word right here, just to show one right here, right? Ha, right, or vote, right? Some might point as ha or vote, right? Ha or vote, ha or vote, point as ha or boat. So saying the or boat, the obias, right? The obias. This is one way of bringing it out. So here we're proving, you know, showing and proving that yes, that we have obia, right, here in the Bible. So for ones to be dismissive, if ones theological or spiritual tradition is that and don't check for as you say the bible and the christian and the this and the that that's referring to the bible or the scriptures so be it right but it does not dismiss you know the validity right or the realness right the realness of that which we speak and that which we can show and prove yes 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 so here 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 let's just get in and get out right here so here let's go down here where it says aha uh, it says it says hey seer hey seer hey seer sore turn aside those who had turned aside right ha o vote ha o boat who had turned aside right and it says a wish a wula wish a wula hey seer ha o vote or wish a wula hey seer ha o boat so i just read it in two different ways i read it one in more of the modern Hebrew way, then I read it more in the Afro-Shemitic pointing. So in the Afro-Shemitic pointing is Ha'obot. In the modern so-called European 70 AD to today, so-called um, um, European Jewish and Judaism, the popular Judaism, 
right? But then there's also the African and the Afro-Shemitic Yehudi net or Judaism. This is what Garfield Reed was alluding to, but he, he misses the scriptural, the biblical chronology because he dismisses it right too much out of hand because of what the European has done, what the white man has done with it. And so blaming the white man, one's blamed the Bible. Said, oh, the Bible has fooled us. No, it's the white man, right? Or the counterfeit Christian that has fooled us, right? That, that attempted to fool our ancestors. It wasn't the Bible. Because remember when the black man first got the Bible, right? He was almost revolutionized, right? In the examples of the Nat Turner and many others, right? But what happened later on? Later on, because what we saw, showed with the slave Bible, because then they recognized they had to give their indoctrination, their programming. That's why most of the verses that most black churches, you know, that have fallen, focus on, are those same slave verses, right? You know, the verses that tell you to be humble, you know, and to be submissive, but not those verses that tell you to rise up against injustice. You know what I'm saying? Even at the point of, of, of warfare, this is why you see the European use the Bible for himself in one way, right? Whether he is a European Christian or European Jew, and then others are taught to go a next way, right? But when we get into our true root, we basically circumnavigate, you know what I mean? We circumnavigate all that. So here, 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 this is the oboe. Right, right, the obot. Now, there are other related words like the yidoni, yidonim, right, the knowers, the word for the wizards, right, ha yidonim, right, and that come from to know. That's where we get the sense of, even today, we get this so-called sense of the Gnostic, right, the so-called Gnostic, right, some say they're agnostic, they don't know, but others are knowers, so a little bit, a little bit more right here, just to bring out. So here, this word is the ob, right? It's, it's there, ha obot in the plural. But now some speculate that the ob, right, based on some of these, um, these uh, dictionary, lexicons, other books, some of the information is right and accurate, but some of it is, is questionable, right? But, but they give us a link to where even they were able to get more affirmative answers for questionable things in the Jusenius lexicon that points a lot to the Ethiopic, to the Gutters and the Ethiopic. So there's a wealth of literature, right, even among the Israelites and others of Ethiopia from their particular tradition of the Lion of the tribe of Judah and even the Beta Israel. So I want to point that out as points of reference that are outside of the traditional white Anglo-Saxon Protestant paradigm, right, that has lied to us and has used and even lied on the Bible. They've lied on the Bible, basically, right? So now people focus on a book, right, and they let the culprit get away, right? We're not focusing on letting the culprit get away. We recognize how the culprit misused you know, misuse the book. An ancient Rasta, when I say ancient, this is like in my early days, you know, coming up New Jerusalem School of Hard Knocks, that Midrash right there, among the Rasta for our yeshiva. And he said that, you know, um, in the school of, you know, Hard Knocks, you just got to recognize certain things. You know what I mean? You know, we grow in grace. I, I want to get into this right here. We'll bring those things out in its due time. So they speculate right here. They speculate that this ob, right, is like a water skin, right, like a water skin bottle. Because the ideas, see what they did is that they read these things, but they didn't have, right, we have peoples, right, not just in West Africa, but also in East Africa, in, in, in Central and even South Africa, Right. Also in other parts of the world, the, the, the whole Indian connection, so-called would say Hindu or Indian connection, hoodoo, voodoo, hoodoo, Hindu. Right. You know, this whole connection is also very interesting. We're just talking about things that are real. Right. And we're talking about spiritualities here or belief systems. Right. Now, people say that, well, the Bible speaks against it. The Bible speaks against it because it is its own. Right, we could say it is its own spirituality. It's its own spiritual. It does not dismiss 
You see, this goes into something that one of the elders, ESP McPherson, he wrote this book that hopefully if we get into a more, you know, a detailed presentation or reasonment, we'll bring that book into exhibit where he speaks about those concerning like the Bible, generally speaking, from, a, from our own black Judeo, you know, Jacob by our black Judeo perspective, the Bible actually um, deals with um, Zion spirits. Right and and kind of heaven spirits. Wow, there are other traditions, Pakuma and others, that deal with more of the ground or the nature, the nature spirits. Right, and the scripture from a Hebrew, we don't dismiss it, but it's a it's just a difference of spirituality. Even in some of the belief system among people who might be into something in common that might be named, you know, voodoo or obia or santeria or hoodoo, they are mischaracterized by outsiders, but they may also have differences even amongst themselves. You see what I'm saying? Differences of interpretation, even in the same spiritual system. This doesn't make them war, but it's like if you're with if you're with this, then you're with this. If you're with us, either you're with us, you're for us, or you're against us. And this is just a kind of a human perspective, but in the covenant sense, it's understandable and explainable why this people, my who based on the scripture themselves had some knowledge or familiarity to use that word familiar so the word familiar spirits he mentioned about a witch well there was a woman and we're talking about this woman right here my no I, i'm not going to show you a picture of the woman right because we don't have the picture of the woman but right here in first samuel no first samuel 28 and 3 so this first verse basically sets up that sh the first king of israel right who was a moshia he was a moshia he was in the Old Testament sense of Christ, he was the anointed, you know, he was the, th this is a symbol of who has the right to be what within the community. He is the first king of Israel. And he went on a war, one might call a religious war, right, against the so-called people who were doing, what is it, who had the obot, right, the ones who had the obot and the yidionim, right, you know, the yidionim. Right. So Saul had put away those who he went to war against them. So this shows that even among Yisrael, there were those who had certain traditions, as we find even in West Africa, some tradition that we find even in West Africa. So this is to the reasonment between um, ones like Garfield Reed on one hand and Brother Zion Lex, when Zion Lex brought out on this very popular black, you say, platform, Sarnetta, this particular point, we were very happy. It was like, Chance, look, he finally said it. You know, we've been talking about it. The Habarim know this. Those who tune in, you know what I mean? The call chosen and few, they know this as well, right? But it's good for ones to become more familiar with it. So when we heard that, we said, we was talking about doing something on this for a moment. So this is the time that we need to at least put in a little bit of work right here. And then hopefully if ones are interested, we follow up. So he mentioned the woman that has a familiar spirit right here. So you see familiar spirit is twice. You see in both the word, the hyperlink word is the H178, which is ob. In the singular, obot, in the plural. Right? A fami so it's a certain kind of a spirit that is called a ob. You get, you get it? A certain kind of spirit or ob. In the plural, oba, obia, 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 oba, obot. Even the Israelites on their way out of Mitzrayim, the Tawi, they had encamped in a place in the wilderness that was known as obot. Obot. And we have that as well. So let's show this right here, just quickly right here. Brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers, getting ready for the podcast. So right here, you see, then said Saul to his servants, seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said to her, behold, there is a woman that hath a familiar spirit that has obia, right, at Endor. Right, so that's the verse right there. And then in the Hebrew says, Vayomer Shaul, La Avadav, or La Avadayo, Bakshu Li, seek for me, Eshet Baalat, Baalat Ob, Eshet Baalat Ov. So right here, seek for me a woman that has, so right there, he says, Bakshu, 
Bakashu, y'all seek. Li for me, Eshet, the Eshet. It's pointed as Eshet or Oset. We sometimes say the Oset, a woman. Ba'alat, Ba'alat, who's a Ba'al. This is a female Ba'al. She's an owner. That word means like a possessor or an owner. Ba'alat or Ba'ilat. Ba'ilat, Ba'alat Ob. Ba'alat Ov. Right? It says, Ve, Ve Elka, Ve Elka, um, Eleha. Right? You know, seek for me, right? It says, We, Eda, 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 Baha, right? Vayo Yomru, and they said to him, Avadav, Abadayo, his servant, Elayo, to him, he nay, look, see, Eshet, right? So they said the Eshet, the Oset, Eshet, Baalat, 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 right? Ob, there's a woman, right? Eshet, woman, Baalat, 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 one who possesses, own, has a female Baal. Right? Ob. Right? Of Ob. Right? And the Ob is the root of Obia. We can show other places where the more fuller form, where we get this form, even that we have today. Be'ain. Right? Be'ain Dor. In the place called the Ain. Ain. The fountain or the well. So this is even the word Ain Dor. In Dor can mean fountain or the well. The eye or the fountain of the forest. So we talk about how it's connected with in some places, those who are into that tradition of Obia or it's different, you know, pseudonymous, like similar, different, you know, they have different names they give to different things. We know about the forest. In the African movies, they talk about the evil forest, the Ain Dor. Bring this out. The Ain Dor. You see Ain Dor right there, the fountain of the door, the fountain. So they say fountain, right? And you'll rely on that, but let's go here. We go to Ain. Ain is the eye. So you see how they have the traditions of the eye, drawing the eye, you know, and we can trace that, yeah, even way back. Ain't nothing new under the sun, right? And the eye, right, showing mental qualities, right? These are some of the tools right here, these words. But how it's used and what belief system or what one's credit, that's the thing. Of mental and spiritual faculties. But it can also mean a spring, a fountain, right? The iron door of the door. Right, of the period, the generation, but there's another word that connects with in the Ethiopic, the door is the forest. Right? But that eye of the revolutions of the ages that can see forward and back, right? But also the door will bring that out as we go forward. That's the next next part of the root of that particular word. Right? To heap up, to gyrate. But notice here, to gyrate, to move in a circle. Right, that wicked dance of Beyonce at the Super Bowl, right? You saw that? I don't know. Right? Gyrate, to dance. Right? To move, to dance. Right? So this is a very important place right here. This is what my our brother went to right here. So yes, Obia, right? Obia is in the Bible. And here we have a king of Israel, Shaul, who fought against it. Right? He had fought vigorously against it. Right? Because of he on a level we could say he was religiously zealous. Right? And he was doing too much. Yes, the Torah, the Lord says this, but it's like a lot of our brothers today, because the Torah says this against this, they focus their whole commitment to, to being in the covenant to this one to what they're against instead of what they're for. Right? Even though what they're against Right, is not posing any threat to them because over is what the Torah is really saying here. So he went against this particular group, like with a kind of a fanaticism, a zeal, but then later on he went to it. So is Obia, right? Is Obia real? Like just say it's real, not not whether you agree with it, right? Not whether you agree with it, but do you understand that it is a reality? So Obia is in the Bible, right? So this. You would never almost, most folks have never been even taught this. A lot of folks are probably looking this up and trying to just verify what we're saying. We try to give certain points of reference. Just going through a couple of scripts right there in Leviticus, uh, Sefer Vayikra, Vayikra, and also in uh, Shemuel, right? you know, in First Samuel. But anyway, brothers and sisters, a little bit more on this. Right? This is also connected with the reason it was Moshe, was Moses a magician. Right, Moses and Aaron, a magician, 
So the next question one might ask, is magic real? It is, but one has to really understand what it is, right? What it is. And we understand what it is because we know who he, who be, who he be. HaKadosh Baruch Hu Baruch Hashem is. So brothers and sisters, a little bit more on this right here. But Obia in the Bible like to thank uh, Zion Lex, you know, for bringing it out on that platform, the side of the platform right there. You know, our fellow black Jew, Ethiopian, Hebrew, royal order, brother, right there. So, Shalom Chabarin. Shalom. This is Yad. And check us out, LOJS.org, LOJS.org. Also, Rastafari Israelites. Please like, share, and subscribe also to Rastafari Israelites in the live stream. Working on that platform right there to have some presentations, some reasonments, you know, some reasonable, maybe, debates, so to speak. Yes, yes, shalom.